Good afternoon, everybody. This is Mark, and we're back here for the afternoon call. So let's talk about the market for a second. You know, last Thursday, we broke out of this range that we were, we were in for a better half of six weeks. That range that we broke out of, we broke out with authority, we broke out with volume. We had, uh, obviously, that big day, Friday, a little bit of digestion, a little bit, you know, up a little bit, down yesterday, up a little bit today. I would expect a few more days of this digestion. We create new levels, higher level bases that we propel from. Here's the spider chart. You can see it's just consolidating nicely. Here's the IWM, Russell, consolidating nicely. Q's, consolidating. You know, Apple's a big part of it, so it's obviously actually not consolidating. That's great. Came right back to its breakout. But if you know the iPhone's released tomorrow, and if Apple regains some uh, composure, you're back in business with, uh, with the Qs also. Overall, I think this market is strong. I think people, overall, just because we have one down day, you can't change your opinion. You can certainly take some, some size off. You could take some swings off. But overall, I think the direction, the trend is your friend, and it remains that way. Obviously, we have some news tonight on Germany. I don't think anything's going to remain. I think everything's going to remain unchanged. If it's not, then we could be in for something that a little bit more interesting. But overall, the charts are telling me we're heading higher. Charts are telling me buying stuff on pullbacks is the key, and that's that's what I'm trying to do. You know, like today, I bought, I traded Google all the way up, was been out of it, bought it today around anywhere from 694 to 692. Didn't move today, but I expected to hold this 10-day moving average, 8-day moving average, for it to move back up to the 700, 702 range. I think the range will now be 690 to 710 in that range, 715, whatever that number is. Versus where it was before, 680 to, 6, uh, to 690. It creates new trading ranges, and our job really is to take advantage of those trading ranges for us to really be able to capitalize on it. You're not necessarily going to get great tight, tight patterns all the time. When you don't, you got to be smart and you got to buy these pullbacks if you believe and you get some conviction that this market is really strong. Today, another trade I did was eBay. Not in a whole lot of play today, but overall looks pretty good. And again, touch this 10-day, 8-day moving average. I like, to, I like to be involved in stuff when they touch their 8-day moving average. Let's, let's go down the ranks at this point in time. Goldman Sachs, I, d I actually think it needs a few more days of rest. Um, looks great, though. I, I know I'm short a little bit overnight. It's really just a hedge against some of my longs. Um, I think it went a little bit too far too fast, but this thing could go to 120 pretty easily. JP Morgan, I actually think it's ready to ramp up and, and go. I'm long JP Morgan. But again, it has not had to move Goldman, has, ha Goldman Sachs has had. I think at some point it's going to play catch up. And, you know, City is has, having a nice move. I think 34 is in the cards. Commodities. Gold and silver. I know a lot of people are talking about it. I've taken a, bu a bunch of my swings uh, in silver off only just to lock in profits and just, you know, see if a little bit more basing, maybe I can, you can add a little bit more, a little back and fill. Right now, gold and silver both look great. Uh, people were asking me today, was it necessarily short? Just because it's not a good long and you need to take some, some profits in it doesn't necessarily mean it's a great short. And I think that's what people have to learn and recognize across the board. Retailers, Burberry pre uh, announced light earnings, so you, you had some weakness in Lulu today, that, but it recovered nicely. Cor I'm sorry, Coors today, Lulu, uh, Ralph Lauren, to name some, but they've all recovered pretty nicely and are back in solid bases. Um, overall, and the retailers have been acting pretty well across the board. So I think it's uh, certainly an industry we have to concentrate on and we have to look at. Um, best in breed, though, Apple, Amazon, and you know Google. Still, the three horsemen I consider them, and I think Priceline at some point will 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 get back into those ranks. Um, does certainly doesn't trade as much volume, but it's something I think traders have to certain re certainly recognize. It did regain its 200-day moving average. I'll put that up for a second and try to find a base, and I believe that's the, what is that? That is the 50-day, it has to get above. 626 gets above there, you're looking at 650, next target. Keeps uh, price line on the radar, certainly. Um, and then some other oil services stocks that I've been watching that had some moves today, I was out of it. 
PXD, looks like 110 is in the cards. EOG, a little bit of a base, one or two more days, looks pretty good to me. Exxon looks good. I still go back to, you know, something that hasn't really run yet and still is just basing Microsoft. I still think it's, it looks like it's a it's, it's viable opportunity, but again, it's not a day trade. It's not exciting. It's not something you really have to be involved. Key, guys, is look at the best in breed. Some of them that I mentioned, some of them that I talk about consistently or we talk about consistently on the, the uh, virtual trading floor. Look for these on pullbacks if we get a pullback in this tape. And if not, you need to find some basing opportunities and continue to really search for your stocks uh, because that's the key. Rotation, rotation, rotation. Home builders look great. Oil service, everything looks, in my opinion, healthy and good. And I think you're gonna get some more chasing until at least the election. Um, and then we'll have to wait and see that what happens. We didn't play by the calendar this year. Uh, considering the last three years, we did. So the rules changed a little bit. You know, calendar last three years, you basically start buying late October, early November. Yeah, you, you, you don't, you take your trades, you, you keep staying long, you keep buying into the new year and late February, early March, you start taking some profits. By April, you get a little weakness. May, you get a little weakness that you can probably short. And, you know, historically, the last three years, you know, June, July, little, little, little back and forth, August week, September week, October, a little bit weak, and you start buying again. It didn't happen. August was strong and a lot of people were away. Now, September, historically weak, we're hanging in there. Um, and to me, that just is telling me something, that we're not gonna play by the rules right now. And with that being said, I think you're gonna catch people. You're either, people are either gonna be under, bigger funds are either gonna be under, uh, exposed to the long side or short, which I don't think there's a whole lot of net short, but we'll have to chase performance. And I think we're, we're talking, we're hearing that on CNBC, which I don't always like, but you're hearing that across the board at this point in time. Let the charts dictate what to do. Overall, one day, we're basing up at the new, new ranges on the spiders. I think that's healthy. And look for, if we get back down to one, you know, in my opinion, you know, you get back down to the eight day moving average, 142.86, it's gonna be a really nice buying opportunity. I just don't know if that's gonna happen the way everybody wants. I think you get it one or two more days of basing and we probably uh, head a little higher as long as no headline news comes into play um, overall. And the, and the stocks are telling us that. And oh, another best in breed are the social media stocks. You know, and it's not Facebook, it's LinkedIn. You know, that's, that's the one we should be playing when uh, you get upticks. Another day or two of basing against 115, probably another buying, opportunities for us, buying opportunity for us to get involved. You can see I'm talking about certain things from the long side. I do take some spiders or some of the other indices uh, on the short side, really merely just as a hedge um, in case I get caught. But overall, I'm pretty bullish and it's gonna take a little bit to ch to, for me to waver on that, on that aspect of it. But you gotta be strategic. You can't just buy blindly. Um, hence why you can't just short blindly. You gotta be smart. You gotta wait for your prices. You gotta pick your prices, pick your spots, try to get conviction, some conviction along with those prices and you're gonna make yourself some money. So hope you've, hopefully you guys had a good day. Really wasn't a whole lot of action midday, um, you know, after the morning. That's okay, that seems to be the action we're getting. You gotta adjust to what it's giving you and try to really figure out you know, the patterns that are taking place. Good luck, hopefully you had a good day today. If not, there's always tomorrow. And again, it's September 11th, so please uh, just you know, take a second to remember you know, what happened 11 years ago. You know, I was in New York City and it's been uh, definitely a crazy experience, um, but you know, it, it's something you, you, you learn from hopefully also. So that being said, I'm a little long-winded, like Scott normally is, but uh, enjoy, enjoy the night, and uh, I will see you back on, on uh, Virtual Trading Floor tomorrow. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.